So now you have a gorgeous baby in your life. Look at how cute they are. Their tiny hands and feet. Hang on a moment. What are those tiny pimple-like dots on their nose? Is this normal? Should the baby see the doctor? Will they be okay? Yes, we understand. A newborn can bring so much joy and uncertainty all at once. All we want is for them to grow up healthy and anything out of the ordinary can be a reason for concern. But don't worry, we're here to assure you that everything will be perfectly fine. Over the next few minutes, we'll be taking you on a journey to explain everything about these tiny white dots known as milium. You'll learn why they are especially common in newborns and how you can distinguish it from other skin conditions. Further, we'll explore the available treatment options along with some practical advice for self-care. Lastly, we'll discuss when it's essential to seek professional medical assistance. So let's get started. Milium are white to yellowish nodules formed on the skin. They are also commonly known as milk spots or oil seeds. A single milk spot or cyst is called a milium, while milia refers to a group of these small cysts. So what exactly are they, these milia? Well, milia occur when tiny glands, known as sebaceous glands, become blocked. Hang on, seba, what? Let's back up. This is your skin. Embedded in your skin are sebaceous glands. These small glands produce an oily substance called sebum, which lubricates our skin and hair. Sometimes, tiny flakes of skin block the sebaceous glands, which results in dead skin cells, sebum and keratin, becoming trapped in small pockets near the skin surface. This trapped material forms the tiny pimple-like bumps or cysts known as milia. Different types of milia can develop at any age, but they're especially common in newborns, affecting about half of all healthy newborns. This is mainly due to the immaturity of a newborn skin, which is still developing and adjusting to the outside environment post-birth. This makes it more likely for the tiny flakes of skin to block the sebaceous glands. Additional factors such as skin burns, rashes, blisters, genetic conditions, and long-term use of steroid creams or ointments can also damage the skin and favour the development of milium across different age groups. You might be wondering if milium and baby acne are the same thing. Although they might seem similar at first glance, it's important to understand that they are different from one another. Milia are often present right at birth, resulting from tiny cysts of dead skin cells that resemble little milk spots. On the other hand, baby acne are small red bumps or pustules which generally appear on your baby's face and scalp about two weeks after birth. As we mentioned previously, milia appear as superficial white to yellowish dots of about 1 to 2 millimetres in diameter on the skin. In newborns, these little milk spots are often seen on the face, especially on the nose, but may also appear on the mucosa, where they are called Epstein pearls, or on the palate, referred to as born nodules. Newborns can even be born with milia. On the other hand, premature babies might develop them a bit later on. In older children and adults, milia are also most common on the face, particularly around the eyes. However, when milia result from another skin condition, like those previously mentioned, they can emerge anywhere on the body where the predisposing condition has affected, such as the arms or legs, chest, or even genitals. By now, you might have come to the conclusion that your baby indeed has milia. Is this good? Bad? How will this impact my baby's health? Is there a treatment? Perhaps a lotion so that my baby's skin becomes soft? These are likely the questions racing through your mind. The good news is that milia doesn't require treatment because they're not harmful. You can even rest assured that the bumps are typically not painful and don't cause any discomfort, although in some very rare types of milia, they can be itchy. In babies, they may persist for a few weeks after birth, while in older children and adults, they may even last a couple of months. Either way, they'll eventually clear up on their own and can be safely left alone. It's important that you should not try squeezing or scraping off milia yourself, as this could lead to skin scarring or infection. There are, however, some self-care tips you can safely try. 
For instance, washing your baby's face gently with warm water and an appropriate soap, followed by pat drying the skin very gently. It's best not to use adult lotions or oils on your baby's skin as it's very soft and delicate. If you're unsure about suitable soaps, lotions or oils for your baby, talk to your healthcare provider. If your baby is big enough, it's also important to use sunscreen when they go outside. Adults might consider an over-the-counter treatment to exfoliate their skin. As far as possible, further trauma should be minimized to reduce the development of new lesions. If milia persists too long or become bothersome, consult your healthcare provider about removal options. In such cases, puncturing the milia with a needle or scalpel and manually expressing the contents typically does the trick, although this is only usually performed on older children and adults. Also, to avoid infections and other complications, this procedure should be performed by a trained professional under strict aseptic conditions. For more extensive milia in older children and adults, other treatments have been reported to be effective, including cryotherapy, which is freezing the lesions, diathermy, a technique that uses high-frequency electric currents to heat the milia, curatage, which is the removal of the milium with a spoon-shaped instrument, chemical peels, dermabrasion, a skin procedure that sands the outer layers of the skin using a rotating device, and laser ablation. For widespread lesions, topical retinoids and some antibiotics may also prove helpful. By now, we hope we've convinced you that milia is a benign and common condition and with that, brought you some peace of mind. However, it's important to know that in certain situations, it's worth seeking a doctor for a more thorough assessment. If your baby still has milia after several weeks or months, or if the lesions become red, swollen, painful, or show any sign of infection, it's a good idea to get in touch with your child's pediatrician or a dermatologist. In older children and adults, if milia causes significant distress due to their appearance, seeking medical advice can help as some treatments can clear up the skin faster like we've already discussed. So all in all, don't worry about small milk spots that form on your newborn skin or appear in older children or even adults. As we wrap up this educational journey about milium, we hope that we've provided you with valuable insights and reassurance. Remember, each child's skin is unique, and sometimes these little surprises are all a part of the growth and development process. While milia can be noticeable, they're most often harmless and temporary, and generally pose no long-term complications. However, if milium persists for too long, becomes bothersome, or turns red and swollen, do talk to your healthcare provider. And for you parents out there, never hesitate to seek professional advice when you're unsure you know your child best. Above all, be patient and kind with yourself. Raising a child is the most challenging yet rewarding job in the world, and you're doing an incredible job navigating through the intricate, beautiful world of parenthood. Thank you for joining us today. Until next time, take care. This video is a part of KenHub's limited clinical series and is for educational purposes only. It does not provide medical advice and none of the information in this video should be used as an alternative to a medical exam, specialist diagnosis, nor treatment. If you're feeling any health disorder symptoms, please contact your doctor.